Diagrams are a prominent feature in the Leaving Cert Biology exam. You're either asked to label them or to draw them and it's really important that you practice them before the exam. So when you're looking over important diagrams, what should you be asking yourself to help you with that last minute revision? Well, firstly, the most important thing to remember is they don't have to be very artistic, very basic diagrams with good, clear labels. That's the most important part. So you must be very specific in how you label. Are your labels clear? Do they point correctly and distinctly to the part of the diagram you want them to? Because there can be no room for guesswork. You will lose marks. A good thing to do is to look at what diagrams have come up in previous years. Look at the really old papers. That always gives you a good idea. And if something hasn't appeared, you know, in the last few years, there's a fair chance that it might appear. Not definite, but a fair chance. So it's worth practising. So use your textbook and pick out those diagrams that you would like to practice. The only way to practice them is to sketch them. Sketch them in pencil, label them in pen. And as you do, write some little notes, some bullet points around the key features of the diagram. Are they special adaptations? What do they do? What's their role? Things like that. And it will help with your revision. Also, ask yourself, what diagram would you hate to see on the exam? What one do you fear the most? That's the one that needs to be practiced. So conquer that fear and then it's eliminated. An important diagram that often has features on the exam is the alimentary canal. Sometimes you've been asked to label it and others you've been asked to draw it. So I would take time, particularly go back to 2015 and look at that paper where you're asked to draw the alimentary canal. And this will give you an idea of how simple a diagram can be. One of the things that you must put in on this diagram is the arrows. That's very important. And as you draw this, then write the story of digestion. How is the small intestine adapted to the roles of digestion and absorption? This is something that you could write a few bullet points on. So one of the features of the small intestine is that it's highly folded and it has millions and millions of these small structures called villi, which greatly increase the surface area for absorption. So it's very important that you can draw and label this diagram. It has come up quite a few times on the exams and it's important that you can put in the lacteal, the blood capillaries and label that muscle section of the intestinal wall. The dental formula has made quite a few appearances in recent years. The human dental formula is important to know. So what does this mean when you see this written down? Just make sure you fully understand it. Well, first of all, this part here is the dental formula. So you start by listing the types of teeth. There's incisors, canines, premolars and molars. And then you take one half of the jaw, top and bottom, and you list the number of teeth of each type of tooth, top and bottom. So there's two incisors, top and bottom, one canine, top and bottom, two premolars, top and bottom, and three molars, top and bottom. And the number two is to tell you that the same pattern or the same combination is on the other half of the jaw. So you could be given a dental formula for another animal and they ask you how many teeth the animal has. Don't forget to multiply it by two. Another topic which is worth revising sketch wise is to draw diagrams, those diagrams related to the male and the female reproductive systems. I think the male one is the most difficult one to draw and sometimes the diagrams in the books are tricky. So this is an outline of a basic diagram that you could produce for your exam. So check out the marking schemes, see how often it comes up when it last came up and what they asked. The female reproductive system is always worth practicing as well. It's much easier than the male system, but it still can be tricky to draw. So practice it and mark in the key details on your diagrams. Can you draw the ear and the eye? These two diagrams are very important. The whole topic, the ear and the eye, is dependent on you being able to draw and label and discuss the diagram. So what do each of the parts of the ear do? What do each of the parts of the eye do? Can you discuss glue ear in relation to the ear and also balance? So it's very important that you practice them. I know that if I was doing my leaving cert now, I would not really like to draw the ear. So it's one that I would practice. Plants are such a huge part of the Leaving Cert course that there has to be some plant diagrams going to appear on an exam paper. You cannot learn plants without learning the diagrams. So start with the stems, the dicot stem and the monocot stem and be able to draw in dermal, ground and vascular tissue.
Spend some time on xylem and phloem. Start with xylem vessels and tracheids and use your textbooks to sketch them. Then move on to phloem, the transverse section and the longitudinal section. Two very important diagrams, often badly drawn and students don't like drawing them. The root diagram often makes an appearance. This is the longitudinal section. This is the most difficult one of the root to draw. So make sure you can mark in all of those key labels, the root cap, the meristem, ground tissue, xylem, phloem and the root hairs and then move on to another diagram where you mark in the zones. A nice straightforward and handy question would be if you were given the diagram and just asked to mark in the zones. So they're worth revising. So you could be asked to draw or to label the die cut root. And so often when you see diagrams in books, they're very elaborate and hard to draw. So I've tried to do the most simplistic one here, just an outline of a diagram that you could possibly produce in your exam. Just make sure you have all of those key labels and make sure that the xylem is in the centre in that star shape. That's the key feature that lets you recognise that it is the die cut root. So next is the internal structure of the leaf. Hasn't been asked very often, but could appear with a question on photosynthesis. So use your textbook to draw just a very basic sketch of it. Remember, when you're dealing with plants, always start with the tissues, dermal, ground, vascular. So dermal tissue will cover the outer regions of the plant. So it's going to be on the top and the bottom of this diagram. Then the inside or the bulk of the plant is mostly made up of that ground tissue. So the middle of the leaf contains the ground tissue and it's made up of the palisade mesophyll layer and the spongy mesophyll layer. Or you can just say palisade layer and spongy layer. And then you have the vein of the leaf and this is where you're going to find the vascular tissue. Don't forget to also mark in on your diagram stoma is one stomata. And then you've got the guard cells and also on the top layer of the leaf and on the undersurface of the leaf is the waxy cuticle. We encountered the diagram of the onion in vegetative propagation, so asexual reproduction in plants, but also in food storage. So it's really important that you can label the onion. Very important, not very often asked and could appear just to throw you. Microbiology is a key part of the Leaving Cert course and we always focus on viruses and bacteria. So in this video, I'm just going to mention the diagrams connected with fungi. So yeast is a unicellular fungus and it reproduces asexually and the method is known as budding. And it's very important that you can describe how budding takes place and to draw a very particular diagram. So note the diagram that I've drawn here. So when you are drawing yeast and budding, you do not draw a line separating the parent cell from the bud. Rhizopus is the other fungus on your course, otherwise known as pin mould, but we commonly refer to it as bread mould. And it's different to yeast in that it's made up of these tube like filaments, these hypha. So one of the questions that you're often asked is to draw and label the structure of the rhizopus, which is dead straightforward. You just have to learn how to do this and draw the labels. But another diagram that you could be asked, which would be a little bit more tricky, would be to discuss sexual reproduction with rhizopus and draw label diagrams associated with that. When there are adverse or harsh conditions such as lack of water, so dehydration, well then rhizopus will undergo sexual reproduction. It's very important that on your diagrams you mark in a plus strain and a minus strain because the hypha have to be chemical opposites. Very important. So the diagram on the right here is adapted from a marking scheme and the one on the left is a more detailed version that I've made just to make sure we tick all boxes. So in this particular year they wanted hypha, the plus and the minus, progammatangia, gammatangia and the zygote spore. But bear in mind, you could be asked for suspensors, the sporangium, the sporangiophore. So it's worth your while doing some very simple sketches, but just including every possible label you can think of. Another important diagram, a member of the Protista kingdom, is the amoeba. So make sure that you can draw and label a good diagram of the amoeba. And remember to include pseudopod, the contractile vacuole and the food vacuole in particular as well. This diagram hasn't appeared for a very long time, is often overlooked. Can you draw and label the synovial joint? And remember, there are simpler versions of this you could draw. Can you draw and label all the parts of the bone, including the periosteum, that protective membrane? The spinal cord is a tricky diagram. It's difficult to draw and it has very detailed labels. So please practice drawing this because it could appear just as it is here where you're asked to fill it in. And don't forget the meninges, those three protective membranes. Or you could be asked to apply this diagram to describe how a reflex action works. And this doesn't appear too often and it would be a difficult question. So the diagram is really worth your while practicing. 
Can you draw and label the respiratory system and how are gases, carbon dioxide and oxygen transported in the blood? So give an account of that, revise that. Can you label the brain and tell me what each part of the brain does? Can you define blood pressure and pulse and give an account of the cardiac cycle? And can you draw a picture of the synapse? So these are just things that I'm remembering at the moment and I think that they're tricky and I would revise if I was you. So the very best of luck in your exams, please stay to the very end of the exam. You never know, you might get inspiration and you'll be sorry you leave. So stay to the very end, draw neat diagrams, take your time, write in bullet points and just do your best. That's all you can do. So the best of luck.